<laughs> Welcome back. Today's video is brought to you by Costco Fruit. What's up guys, welcome back, it's Kongboy. Today I'm discussing the evolution of NFTs. In order to become a successful NFT investor, it's extremely important to understand the milestones from the NFT space. Bitcoin was the very first fungible crypto asset and also the network where the first NFTs were born. Miners, when they confirm blocks, can choose to leave messages in them. And the very first art or graphic recorded on a blockchain was done by Dan Kaminsky using ASCII or keyboard characters to make a tribute or eulogy to his friend, cryptographer, Len Sassaman in 2011. Colored coins were the first instance of making digital assets unique on a blockchain. It was done on Bitcoin in 2012, and groups or people could color different coins to make it mean whatever they wanted it to. And it gave inspiration for and led to the creation of Counterparty. Counterparty is a protocol that adds functionality to the Bitcoin network. Using XCP token, users can read and write messages as metadata on Bitcoin transactions, which are used as instructions to create and trade off-chain assets tied to Bitcoin. Spells of Genesis was the first game on the Counterparty protocol, and they released a set of 42 cards in 2015. Terra Nullius was the first NFT to be on the Ethereum network. It was launched in August of 2015, and there was no transfer function. The code was only 10 lines long, and it allowed users to engrave a message on the blockchain by using the contract directly on chain. It involved a highly manual process where the only way for users to know if something that they were buying had already been purchased was to see if the gas fee was outrageous and that way they would know that it's been purchased. The founders only minted 22 of these and then years later in September of 21, people rediscovered it and then minted out all 4,000. Ethereum World was the first tradable NFT and it was released on Ethereum in 2015. The world was made up of hexagonal 33 by 33 plots of land. Land was initially sold for one Ethereum, 43 cents at the time in 2015. Farming allowed users to gather blocks, which they could customize their land by including things like artwork or writing things on it. Next up is Pixel Map. Pixel Map is a board of individually customizable pixel images stored on chain and presented on their website. It launched in 2016 and it was one of the first NFT projects to store image data on the blockchain. It's very similar to Ethereum World, and the team stated that they were inspired by the Million Dollar Homepage, which was a website that allowed users to buy pixels in order to display text or art of their choosing. Because it's on a blockchain, rather than having to ask the website developers what they would like to have included on the website, they can submit what their pixels are gonna be directly from the contract. And each tile was listed for two ETH, $20 at the time. Rare Pepes are another early Bitcoin NFT released through the Counterparty platform. It was made by various artists between 2016 and 2018, and they were the very first meme NFTs. They're based on the Pepe the Frog meme from the early 2000s, and prior to being NFTs, someone tried selling a collection of these Rare Pepes on eBay for $100,000 until it got removed. And now they've sold for over $3 million in volume. ENS, Ethereum Name Service, is a secure, decentralized domain name platform which allows users to send transactions without long addresses and also host uncensorable websites. Originally launched in May of 2017, they have an infinite supply and currently over 1.6 million domain names registered. They also have 500,000 holders of ENS domains. Next up are the CryptoPunks. The original version, CryptoPunks V1, had an error in the marketplace, which allowed the buyer to take the NFT and then could get the money back. The founders of the CryptoPunks, Larva Labs, sold 40 of these V1 versions before making an announcement of the error. They were then deemed useless, and then they launched the V2 version, which rendered V1 valueless at the time. A community-led team has since created a wrapped version for the V1 punks, which patched the original bug and has allowed them to regain value. They were the first mainstream NFT collection and the first notable one with a 10,000 supply. Next up are the Crypto Kitties. There's 50,000 of the Genesis versions that came out in November of 2017 and one of the first instances of breeding for an NFT. They're most known for practically disabling the ETH network due to the congestion from the peak of their popularity. At the height of their popularity, they made up almost 25% of all Ethereum network traffic and a total of 4 billion cats can be created due to genetic limitations of their cat attributes. 
There are currently over 2 million in supply and the floor practically being zero. Though there are combinations of trades that do go for a higher amount. NBA Top Shots are virtual moments represented as NFT cards with embedded videos. These include highlights from some of the league's most notable players. They were originally released in 2020 and became extremely popular in early 2021. They brought a lot of mainstream investors into the space and they were created with the help of Dapper Labs, the creators of CryptoKitties. Next up, the Cyber Kongs. The thousand Genesis Kongs began yielding banana token in April of 2021. They make 10 banana per day and that would be used to breed and make baby Kongs. These baby Kongs were born in incubators, meaning the traits were not yet revealed. And this introduced delayed or unopened NFTs that could be claimed by the owner at any time or traded to someone who wants to take the gamble themselves. They were the first NFT collection to introduce legendary characters, meaning one of ones that have unique traits that no other avatars have with various cool themes. And they released VX Kongs in August and were the first NFT project partner of the Sandbox game. Another NFT milestone was the release of the Board Ape Yacht Club. They introduced NFTs as a status symbol. 10,000 of the Board Apes were released in April of 2021, and they were created by Yuga Labs. They're also working on their own metaverse game called The Other Side, and MoonPay and Yuga Labs partnered to sponsor celebrity purchases in order to bring more mainstream adoption to their NFT collection. Celebrities include Justin Bieber, Jimmy Fallon, Post Malone, and other athletes and many more celebrities. Next is Art Blocks. They're the first popular fine art collection made up of a variety of artists. They're mainly algorithmically generated abstract art, and they have three collection tiers, curated, playground, and factory. The curated collection is made up of the best artwork and hand-selected by the curation board. The playground collection consists of approved artists, which freely experiment with more releases that must also meet quality standards. And the factory collection is approved for artists to list art without a deep review process. Moonbirds were a major NFT collection release because they broke a record in being the largest NFT collection to sell out at a price of 2.5 ETH, a supply of 10,000, generating them $289 million in a single day. Proof pass holders, sort of an access token for the most serious NFT investors, were allowed to mint two of these for free. They're heavily backed by venture capital firms and they have staking called nesting, which allows for upgraded nests which are basically promises of future unreleased utility. Another great milestone in the space is NFTs for a cause. Many projects have donated some amount of money, but there are some projects that have given a lot. And The Giving Block is a fundraising organization that aims to facilitate crypto donations and make it easier. Artblock's community donated 3.5 million to an Australian medical humanitarian charity. And CyberKongs, as well as Bored Apes, have donated to charitable organizations such as Virunga National Park in the Congo and Orangutan Outreach, fighting to preserve wildlife in endangered areas of the world. Next, I'll touch on some upcoming use cases for NFTs. One is music NFTs. Artists can be more fairly paid by avoiding streaming services and other third parties that take cuts throughout the process, leaving artists with a smaller cut from revenue generated. An artist made $68,000 from two music NFTs and 200 collectors, which is equivalent to royalties from 7 million Spotify stream. Obviously, the novelty of this technology likely played a role in how lucrative this deal got, but it certainly still proves the legitimacy and potential for this technology. It would let artists publish music much quicker and can allow for a pay per play system for much faster payments to the artists. An upcoming milestone that I'm personally excited for is when NFTs are seriously being used for real estate. NFTs could easily allow for fractional ownership over a property and allow for more easy and fair revenue sharing between parties. Property titles could eventually be recorded and verified using the blockchain. Another would be soulbound tokens. These are already used for fun things like POAPs, which tracks attendance and contributions for a variety of things, and they're stored in crypto wallets where they cannot be transferred. There are many potential uses for this property, which is hard-coded into the tokens. This can also help for things like financial use cases, such as debt obligations. And this might seem like a scary future to some, but we do have to accept the reality that this technology being immutable and transparent 
for data on blockchains won't always be used in ways that we find attractive. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Catch you later.